for us to find the equation of the tangent line and normal line to the graph of x to the fifth cosine squared y minus sine y equals zero at the point zero comma two pi. We'll first have to perform implicit differentiation to determine dy dx using the given equation. Then we'll determine the value of dy dx at the given point, which will give us a slope of the tangent line. From there, we can determine the equation of the tangent line, and then from there, we'll determine the equation of the normal line. Remember, the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency. So we begin by differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x. I'm gonna go ahead and write cosine squared y as the square of cosine y to make it easier to differentiate. And now we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. If we have a function of y, we have to apply the chain rule and we'll have an extra factor of dy dx. So notice differentiating x to the fifth times the square of cosine y with respect to x, we need to apply the product rule where we have the first function of x to the fifth times the derivative of the square of cosine y with respect to x. So we'll have two times cosine y to the first times the derivative of the inner function of cosine y, which is negative sine y. And then because we have a function of y, we have a factor of dy dx. So here we have the first function times the derivative of the second function, and then plus the second function of the square of cosine y times the derivative of the first function with respect to x, which is just five x to the fourth. And then we have minus the derivative of sine y with respect to x, which is cosine y and then times dy dx equals on the right, the derivative of zero with respect to x is zero. And now we need to solve this equation for dy dx. Because the dy dx terms are both negative, let's move those to the right side of the equation and we'll leave the square of cosine y times five x to the fourth on the left. Let's write that as five x to the fourth and let's write the square of cosine y back in the form of cosine squared y equals on the right. Notice how this product here is going to be negative. So if we add it to both sides, on the right we'll have positive two x to the fifth cosine y sine y dy dx. And then if we add cosine y dy dx to both sides, on the right we have plus cosine y times dy dx. And now we can factor out dy dx on the right. Which gives us dy dx times, we have two x to the fifth cosine y sine y plus cosine y. Now I do want to mention we could perform a substitution here for two cosine y sine y, which is equal to sine two y, using the double angle identity shown here below, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in this form for now. And now to solve for dy dx, we divide both sides by two x to the fifth cosine y sine y plus cosine y. Simplifying. Let's change the order of the equation. We have dy dx equals five x to the fourth cosine squared y divided by the sum of two x to the fifth cosine y sine y and cosine y. However, notice we can simplify this fraction because the numerator and denominator share a common factor of cosine y. To show this, I'll write the numerator as cosine y times five x to the fourth cosine y. Factoring out cosine y from the denominator, we have cosine y times the quantity two x to the fifth sine y plus one. In this form, notice how cosine y divided by itself simplifies to one leaving us with the simplified derivative function dy dx equals 
5x to the 4th cosine y divided by the sum of 2x to the 5th sine y and 1. And now to find the slope of the tangent line at the point 0 comma 2 pi, we need to evaluate dy dx at the point 0 comma 2 pi. And therefore we substitute 0 for x and 2 pi for y, which gives us 5 times the fourth power of 0 times cosine 2 pi, all divided by 2 times the fifth power of 0 sine 2 pi plus 1. Simplifying, cosine 2 pi is 1, so 5 times 0 to the fourth times 1 is 0. In the denominator we have 0 plus 1 or 1, 0 divided by 1 is equal to 0. So now we know the slope of the tangent line is equal to 0. And if a line has a slope of 0, it's a horizontal line, and if we have a horizontal line passing through the point 0 comma 2 pi, the equation of the tangent line must be y equals 2 pi. Remember, every horizontal line is in the form of y equals a constant. Every vertical line is in the form of x equals a constant. So the tangent line is y equals 2 pi. Now if we wanted to, we could use point slope form, simplify and get y equals 2 pi, and I'm going to go ahead and show that. So using point slope form of y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1, we know the slope is zero and the point is zero comma two pi, which gives us y minus two pi equals zero times the quantity x minus zero. Solving for y, we do get y equals two pi. And now from here, remember the normal line is the line that's perpendicular to the tangent line at the point zero comma two pi. Well, if the tangent line is a horizontal line, then the normal line is a vertical line, and the vertical line passing through the point zero comma two pi must be x equals zero. Also notice how the slope of the tangent line is zero. So if we write zero as a fraction, for example, zero over one, remember if two lines are perpendicular, the slopes are negative reciprocals, and negative one divided by zero is undefined. Remember, every vertical line has an undefined slope. So the equation of the tangent line is y equals two pi, and the equation of the normal line is x equals zero. Let's verify this graphically. In blue, we have the graph given by the implicit equation. The point zero comma two pi is here on the y-axis. The red line y equals two pi is tangent to the curve at the point zero comma two pi. And also notice how the green line, x equals zero, is normal to the tangent line at the point of tangency. And therefore the graph verifies our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.